Now we have the backbone of fuel team, our Ankit Kumar Patel talking on fuel quick talk that is translation assessment redefined. Ankit Kumar manages the team of engineering localization and documentation at Red Hat. Ankit has played various roles like a technical translator, language maintainer, software programmer, web developer, system administrator, program project management professional, and so on. Ankit is an integral part of Fuel team as a fuel community with all his technical and management skills. Over to you, Ankit. Thank you, Ed. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about translation assessment. The most important thing, according to me, in the entire process of localization. So, uh, before we go ahead further and talk about translation assessment, I just would like to ask a single question. Uh, let me say that I did my schooling uh, from a Gujarati medium and uh, I have uh, uh, faced a couple of, I had a couple of complaints during my uh, study and uh, I wanted to first of all ask people sitting over here, how many of you have done your schooling in your native language? Wow, the entire hall is packed. Cool. Okay, so when you are studying in your uh, uh, native language, you always have uh, uh, one particular section of writing an essay right? That you have to write an essay in your native language. And uh, I always had a complaint in my uh, childhood that why I was getting a less marks. My mom used to say that your handwriting was not good. My dad had different uh, 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 opinions about my essay writing and so on. I'm sure many of you had the same complaints in your childhood as well, like why I did not get the full marks in my essay writing, right? So how do you, how do you know? that the person or your teacher who has judged you in your essay writing, how, how your translation, how your writing is being assessed, right? There is no formula for that. And do we have a formula for that in our uh, translation world? No, right? So today I'm going to bring you the uh, formula or the matrix as we call, shortly we call it translation quality matrix that we are going to launch today on the FUEL website. So uh, let me go ahead with the next slide. As I, as I have already uh, talked to you guys that the quality of the localization is very much important in the world of localization. And that starts with the translation. So I don't need to explain it again. Uh, of course we have resources available like glossaries, dictionaries, style guides, translation memories, spell checkers, screenshot comparison, and fuel glossaries, fuel style guides, and all those things, right? However, how do you ensure that the, all those things, all those standards are being applied or not while translations are being uh, submitted by our translators or the translation community, right? Uh, in the morning when we were listening to Mr. Mahesh Kulkarni, he was asking that, he was in fact uh, uh, proposing that how can we make sure that somebody has submitted a translation which is a fuel compliance or not. We don't have a mechanism to do that, right? but we can always have something which will help us to evaluate the translations. Of course, that's a manual process, right? It requires a, it requires a language expert, it requires a linguist to check the quality of the localization. So, do we have translation guidelines? Yes, there are, but quite a few. Every language community in the FOSS world have their own tra translation guidelines, but not which is like a standard across or not which is like a common across. So, I mean, there are not enough resources available in this area. Do we have any translation quality assurance tools? Is there any tool in the, in the, in the open source industry or anywhere which will assure that your localization is uh, quality assured? I don't think so. The translation quality assessment matrix is available now. Uh, before I take you to the actual demo of this thing, I wanted to talk about the parameters the error categories that we have used to build this matrix are as follows. The, if you have a text which you would like to assess, how many categories you would divide it into? Trivial, which is something that you can ignore. Venial, which is something you can forgive. Critical, that is something that should be fixed. It must be fixed. And blocker, 
totally unacceptable. These are the four categories. The first category, first two categories are considered as a minor categories, but the second two, you can say these are the major error categories for whenever you are assessing somebody's translations. The parameters. What are the parameters that we have used to build that matrix? The accuracy, the accuracy of the language, language, technical validation, locale, style and culture, and terminology. These are the major parameters that we have used to build the matrix. And of course, there are various sub-parameters. Okay? Before, I mean, without you looking into the actual system, you won't be able to have a complete idea about what this matrix is. So let me not wait any more time and let's go to the website. So, fuelproject.org, I hope it opens. So, over here, if you see, there is a quality center. That's where we do all sort of a technical quality assessment uh, related stuff. Uh, there is a screenshot comparison method which we have uh, introduced long time ago. The translation quality assessment metrics for which you can go through here. And that's where it is. Okay, this is how it looks like. Is it readable or can I? So, how to use it? First of all, we have this question always whenever there is a new member joining the localization community. We have this question as a language coordinator or language team member that whether this person is capable of doing the justice to the translations that we have been submitting from a long time. How do we know that? Right? If you give this translation test to somebody, somebody will read that 5 out of 10, somebody will read that 3 out of 10, somebody will read that 8 out of 10. So we need to have a concrete formula for that. So let's say uh, you have a word document or a translation which has around 1000 or 10,000 words and while you go through his or her translation test, you have found like say three trivial errors which are like something that you can really ignore. You have found in the accuracy parameter you have found the person has made two spelling mistakes. You can put it here in this section of language and spelling. If the person has, uh, if the person has not done the justice to the capitalization rule, probably you can mention it here. If there are errors with the punctuation, you can put, you can mark those things here. If there are grammatical errors, you can mark them here. And let's enter the formula and let's see what, what is the overall score that person gets. So this was a 10,000 words of document and there were a couple of uh, errors that we have noted down. And the system has given us that the person has, person's score is 98 out of 100. Okay? So this is how the system calculates the, uh, or judge the translation quality of a translator. And, of course, you should be, the person who is evaluating somebody's translation should be knowledgeable enough to use this particular matrix because you should have an understanding of what are the glossary terms that you have been using over, over the period of time or what are the uh, abbreviations that your language, native language should have and all that. So this is the uh, translation assessment matrix that we are making it available to the world uh, through our website. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you. Questions? Cool. This was a really, really big talk and I have a question. Thank you, it was really interesting. We are also doing something similar. Uh, since it was, quality was a concern when I was doing my research in Arman, three years I've spent, so I say one or one and a half years I've spent on quality. By any chance, anybody here from Pirtal? Anybody could raise hands? They call it Pirtal because it's such a bigger name. But you are there, right? Pirtal Wolf, you know. Uh, have you gone through the uh, filters over there, four categories, uh, critical and all that? I could see something similar here going on. Yes. Maybe 
yes. you might have discussed with them as well. I don't know. Yes. Uh, I guess it's it's a nice attempt. Uh, I had implemented something similar uh, three years back. Uh, I'm not saying that it's good exercise. It's it's a very good exercise. Uh, the whole logic I see lies behind uh, various domains or which particular domain you are going to. Do translation. I guess you are adjusting weights over there. That's why for categories, I guess I don't yeah. find any domain information there. Maybe for a domain, you need to adjust some weight and then add that weight in your formula and get the real number. I guess that would be feedback from my side. Plus, there are various other algorithms uh, which I had worked on long time back, uh, which are based on quality. Uh, Lisa is no, no, uh, not anymore there to help us, but it has it got dissolved and. I really don't like it much as well. Uh, SAE J2450 quality standard is one, which is awesome, I would say. Uh, uh, if you are talking about European quality standard, 15038 is European quality standard. If you go through that, you will find some more parameters might be you can, you would like to add here. And yep. All the best to you. Absolutely, thanks. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ankit.